The new year gives us a new President Obama, especially in his dealings with Congress. White House aides have been suggesting to reporters that the president would find his way around Congress when he needs to end yesterday in a move that shocked Senate parliamentary experts and made perfect sense to everyone else. The president defied Republican obstructionists in the Senate and swore in the first director of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau without having him, him confirmed by the Senate as required by law. The president used his power to make a recess appointment, which allows him to bypass Senate confirmation, something the Constitution allows him to do only when the Senate is in recess. The problem here is the Senate is not technically in recess. It has been holding pro forma sessions, better described as utterly fake sessions that last minutes or less per day. Republicans have forced the Senate to do this in the belief that it would prevent the president from issuing any recess appointments. The president has, in effect, declared the pro forma Senate sessions to be fraudulent. And therefore, the Senate is, in the president's view at least, indeed in recess. The outrage from Senate Republicans was instantaneous. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell said, President Obama, in an unprecedented move, has arrogantly circumvented the American people by recess appointing Richard Cordray as director of the new CFPB. Senator Orrin Hatch of Utah, the ranking member of the Senate Finance Committee, said this is a very grave decision by this heavy-handed autocratic White House circumventing the Senate and tossing out decades of precedent to appoint an unaccountable czar to appease its liberal base is beneath the office of the president. One Republican senator fully supports the president's action. Massachusetts Senator Scott Brown said, I support President Obama's appointment today of Richard Cordray to head the CFPB. I believe he is the right person to lead the agency and help protect consumers from fraud and scams. While I would have strongly preferred that it go through the normal confirmation process, unfortunately the system is completely broken. In the latest Boston Herald poll, Scott Brown is losing badly to Elizabeth Warren in his campaign for re-election, 42 percent, to Elizabeth Warren's 49 percent. Scott Brown's statement is simply following Elizabeth Warren's lead. He's the former Ohio Attorney General. He recovered $2 billion for pensioners in Ohio. He was the first AG on the front lines in the mortgage servicing scandal. He's a former state treasurer. There's nothing to object here to unless you really believe we ought to stick with the failed regulatory policies we have. Would you vote for him if you're in the United States Senate? Boy, you bet. I would not only vote for him, um, uh, I would speak on his behalf and wear a Rich Cordry for head of the CFPD button. Joining me now is the man at the center of the constitutional storm, the newly sworn in director of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, Richard Cordray. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. My pleasure. And congratulations on making history and provoking a constitutional crisis simply by trying to fill a position uh, created by the Congress by law that the Republicans apparently just don't want anyone to have in that job. It wasn't, they made it very clear, it wasn't personal against you. They just believe this agency shouldn't exist in this form and no one should fill that job. Yeah, they did not make it personal about me, and I appreciated that, and I never take anything personal in these uh, types of uh, issues. Uh, my position here is there's an important job to do. Uh, people know that they need a consumer watchdog to help them navigate the financial marketplace, to stand on their side, to prevent fraud, and to see that people are treated fairly. That's what we're going to do, and that's what I'm focused on doing. Let's listen to what President Obama said in describing the job that he's asked you to do. His job will be to protect families like yours from the abuses of the financial industry. His job will be to make sure that you've got all the information you need to make important financial decisions. Right away, he'll start working to make sure millions of Americans are treated fairly by mortgage brokers and payday lenders and debt collectors. 
Now, this is the, the uh, bureau that was originally one of the ideas uh, Elizabeth Warren uh, suggested, and many thought that, that job, the job that you're getting should go to her. Uh, the president and others believed that she couldn't be confirmed, and then it turned out no one could be confirmed, and, and here we stand tonight. Uh, how do you expect to go forward in an agency that has this much resistance from Republicans? Well, Lawrence, I've always had uh, good success at the state and local level of working across the aisle in a very bipartisan way. In Ohio, at times, we had to work on some really difficult problems, some financial issues when I was state treasurer and then as attorney general. I feel that I can do that at the federal level as well. I have reached out to the congressional leadership, both sides of the aisle, both chambers. I've given them my personal commitment that they will have the information and input that they need to understand what we're doing, how we're working to serve the same constituents that they were work to serve. Uh, and I intend to c fulfill that commitment. This uh, Just getting this bill passed in the first place that created this was a real battle for the president. Getting this agency set up, obviously getting you into office has been an incredible battle. I want to listen to what Elizabeth Warren said about how the president achieved this. I want to be clear. If we didn't have the president, Barack Obama, sitting in that White House behind me here, we wouldn't have this agency. He fought for it to make it happen, and he fought for it at a level that really matters to me. There were a lot of grand bargains offered. They never hit the press. You know, if only you'll rip off one of its arms, if only you'll make it weak and shackle it, we'd be glad to let you have something called a Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. You know what he said every time? No. Uh, she is right about the powers that have been preserved as you as, as you read the powers that you now have, having been sworn in. The, it does seem very powerful. Your position seems very powerful. You're able to uh, create rules of the road for financial institutions. Uh, in effect, what, what is the effective difference between your powers and Congress's powers to legislate? Well, I think like every independent agency, Congress has delegated us authority uh, to make some rules that fill in the gaps in legislation. But frankly, when I was Attorney General of Ohio and I was trying to help people with their consumer problems, seniors who were being scammed and, and defrauded of their life savings, people who were losing their homes to foreclosures, uh, people who were drowning in credit card debt, I often was frustrated because we didn't have the tools we needed to be able to try to make problems right for consumers and make the financial marketplace work in a fair manner. Uh, at this at this bureau, we've now been given the authority to work on those types of problems, mortgages, credit cards. These are not things that are going to dictate rules in the American economy. They're things that are going to make the market work better for people so that they can make better informed decisions, decisions that they can live with and take responsibility for. I think that's pretty straightforward. I think the American people appreciate that the importance of having someone stand on their side and help them navigate the financial marketplace. I didn't find anything in the establishing statute here that prevents your Republican successor, let's say five, six years from now, there's a Republican president uh, with a Republican doing your job. I, I don't see what would prevent that Republican appointee from reversing virtually all of your rulings. Is there something in this law that, uh, that, that prevents that? Uh, no, as with any independent agency, you know, as you know, Lawrence, with Congress itself, there'll be an ebb and flow in the in the policy and the outlook of this country over time. But the na nature of the job here is protecting individual consumers. Who are we talking about? We're not talking about impersonal people. We're talking about our mothers and fathers, our sisters and brothers, our sons and daughters. We know people who suffer financial problems or struggle or make bad decisions. If we can improve the marketplace for them, I think that we will continue to win the approval of the American public over time, and I think we'll win over our critics. Please tell me you're going to create the first user-friendly agency in the history of the federal government and that consumers are going to be able to go to your website and find out what their rights are in relation to credit card companies, mortgage companies, and, the su and such things. Lawrence, they already can. One of the things we've done is we've set up at our website, consumerfinance.gov, there's a tell your story function. People can come there and tell us about the struggles, the problems, the issues that they're confronting face to face in their real lives. Uh, and we have already been hearing thousands of those stories, which are going to be very important to us because they'll tell us what's important to the people of this country, what we need to do to make the marketplace work for them. Uh, and we're working also very uh, cooperatively with financial 
financial institutions to help them understand the problems people are facing and how we can improve this marketplace. Uh, we do intend to use technology to be very user friendly. We talk about and take seriously our goal of being a 21st century agency. We want people to feel comfortable coming to us because we work for them and what we're going to do for them I think will be very important in both improving their lives and strengthening our economy. Will you please come back to the show in six months just to talk of five minutes, five minutes only, just to talk about how user fr friendly this Consumer Protection Bureau is. Consumers in the title of it. I just want to see something established in 2010, 2011 with all of our modern computer uh, com capabilities. I just want to see how user friendly the federal government can finally be in one agency. All right, that, that's a deal, and I'll be glad to come back anytime. Great, thank you very much. And I just want to point out, you got 53 votes in the United States Senate, but in the new United States Senate, 53 is no longer a majority, and so the president had to go the way he went if you were going to get this job. Thank you very much for joining us tonight, Richard Cordray, the new chair, uh, director of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. My pleasure.